on a phenomenal football Saturday. Let's see how Richmond uh, has planned for success. Brought to you by the good folks at Northwestern Mutual. North Carolina A&T and uh, Richmond all set to go. It's this Richmond football team went to the 2015 semis a year ago. Their 11th playoff appearance. Third straight for head coach Danny Rocco taking his team to the FCS playoffs and the semis last year. The football gods have blessed us have they not on Thanksgiving weekend sun splash November afternoon 53 degrees sunny my partner Doug Graber he's so warm and such a beautiful Saturday <laughs> coach you didn't even bring your overcoat that's the first victory of the day absolutely and there we see coach Rocco boy what a turnaround for this program in this fifth year he's done an amazing job. Now captains and officials uh, Richmond has won the toss uh, Danny Rocco wants the football and Doug you mentioned it Kyle Loletta the the red shirt junior out of uh, Exton Pennsylvania was having a tremendous year he went down last week with an ACL Rod Broadway the head coach there of North Carolina and T who's done such a tremendous job with his MEAC program he yesterday made a quarterback switch as well he sure did and that was a, a shock to us we found out just before the game and it will really be interesting now to see how Isaiah Hitlin does he moved from wide receiver during the season both of these teams have been decimated with injuries at the quarterback position. Richmond has played five quarterbacks and now this is the fourth quarterback that's played for a and T. Richmond an eight and three football team they were sitting at seven and one they have dropped two of their last three students of course on the Thanksgiving break but that gentleman's got his <laughs> his spider on and he's ready to roll and you should be too. Cody Jones has got it on the tee at the 35 yard line. Well you know Richmond has had problems all they have lost their top five kickoff returners so this is Dijon for setback to receive. Yeah, Doug there have been we'll, we'll get into that during the course of the telecast today but as we uh, had our conversation with uh, Richmond's head coach Danny Rocco just a litany of injuries this year yep. and many of them season ending in double digits on his program. Yeah he's lost 10 starters. Yep. Settle back and enjoy everybody game on as this is Dijon Brissett from the two yard line for Richmond. Nice return Brissett will bounce his way to the 30 yard line that's a 28 yard start start for Dijon Brissett. All right, so let's take a look at Kevin Johnson, sophomore out of Atlanta. Last time he played was during the 2015 season. Coach Graber, give us the backstory on this. How did he wind up back on this football team and the starting quarterback today? It's been crazy, and, and he's been uh, definitely a redshirt uh, season plan for him this year. He came to, went to Coach Rocco on Monday, said, I want to play, I want to give it up for the team. That's amazing. Now Jackson's going to come see man uh, he overthrew his intended wide receiver as uh, he had Steven Jacob the tight end one in three so uh, again this uh, the Kevin Johnson look right now is is one that uh, you know you didn't expect but when you have as many quarterbacks go down as Danny Rocco did uh, sometimes uh, desperation calls for different measures huh, coach. Yeah and he's a different kind of quarterback than what they've had. He's more of an athlete uh, quarterback. I certainly expect to see more zone read and option and movement passes today with him at the helm. This is Deontes Thompson broke a tackle. Strong seven yard push from Deontes Thompson. Thompson was able to uh, come up. Up with seven. All right, Doug, let's take a look at our impact players yeah, there for well, you. Brian Brown is an NFL receiver. He is outstanding. Deontes Thompson, the third running back, but he's had a good year. He's averaging 6.2, and this Angelo Keys is a monster up front. And Jeremy Taylor, the linebacker for AT, is all over the field. Yeah, keep an eye on Brian Brown, who wears number 12 in that Richmond pass game. Close to 1,200 yards. This is Thompson. Well, he got rocked as that hit would come from Zarius Lockhart. Lockhart 
that free safety stepping into that A-gap and did business. Boy, did he ever, and I watched him on tape yesterday. Both of these safeties, Albert and Lockhart, man, they, they bring it. They are very athletic and very physical. All right, it's going to bring up a fourth down and one, and from their own 39-yard line, Danny Rocco, who's had his squad uh, in five consecutive FCS playoffs now with Kevin Johnson didn't get Boy, there I don't think so now nah, that line to make was the 40 yard line and uh, Deontes Thompson got rocked again Zarius Lockhart on the fourth out stop for North Carolina at T the penetration is what got him and that was Danny Rocco's biggest concern going into this game is that defensive front is very quick for the Aggies and they got the penetration you got a dead play. Well, there it is. Uh, they have uh, again showed their want this defense. And now, how about tremendous operating position here? This is Isaiah Hicklin, but it's going to be uh, Olawafemi Bamiro to start this with a quarterback. Tariq Cohen on that first down call. Omar Howard wraps him up after a short game. So they did bring uh, Olawafemi Bamiro out. So this is Bamiro, and Dougie's a fifth-year senior out of Washington, D.C. Yeah, and, and he was 13 to start the year, and then with the all the injuries at quarterback, he played. We thought that Isaiah Hicklin was going to start today, but a last-minute game-time decision to uh, start the senior. Quarterback uh, carousel going on early for both head coaches. Out of that zone read. Now give the football to Markwell Cartwright. Cartwright got a couple. Going to bring up third down at six. Doug Graber, let's take a look at our impact players on the offensive end. A couple of tremendously big, talented wideouts for uh, the A&T squad. Yeah, a six-four and six-three, and I'll tell you, can they play? They are very athletic defensively for Richmond. Winston Craig is really the star of that defensive front, and Omar Howard is their leading tackler all over the field. All right, this is third down and five. Tariq Cohen off the bobble, hauled it in, but he drew a crowd of uh, four blue shirted Richmond Spiders. Tafon Mainza, Mainza on that hit. As uh, Cohen juggling the football, and that drew a crowd. It certainly did. And uh, watch all the white hats get to the football here, but I think we've got a late hit out of bounds. Look, look at the. I, I don't know. I didn't see anything there that uh, I saw. If they but they picked after the up. play. Play, personal foul, defense number 59, unnecessary roughness, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's Billy Cowell, uh, the sophomore. As you see, our uh, our game officiating crew today, the referee that you just heard from. Carl Vaccaro and Doug these this officiating crew is uh, from the uh, the Northeast Athletic Conference so yeah, that moves the football to the 20 here. Yeah that was a huge penalty. Bamiro going to take a shot in zone. Well you see the size of Denzel Keys. He was in coverage with Tafon Mainza. Keys has made some extraordinary big play catches this year. But he adjusts to the ball as good as any receiver I've seen this year. And of course 6-4 tried to get up in one hand and keep his feet in bounds. You know it's worth noting that this young man right here the fifth year senior last week. Oh he really struggled just 12 of 33. 161 yards through a couple of picks so only hit 36 percent of his throws last week. Not second at 10. This is Tariq Cohen. Good cut as he got smacked down as he got to the 14 yard line. That's going to bring up third down and four. As Tariq Cohen Doug you uh, equated him to the skills of a modern day Barry Sanders and how about over 1500 yards rushing and 18 TDs on the year. Yeah and I'll tell you defensively buddy you better be in your correct gap. And you better be you better not over pursue because it, it might start left and go wide right. I mean he's all over the place. Four wide receivers Cohen will come motion. Put the football in the hands of Cohen in space. Tariq Cohen 
probably came up about a half yard shy of that line to make. So decision time for Rod Broadway. Linebackers Omar Howard and Shelton Hodge on the stop. Yeah, that was great pursuit. Boy, they took him outside in, inside out, and they really gave him no room right there. Jumbo look here, Coach Graber coming on as Rod Broadway is going to go big on fourth down, and it's actually closer to two. Yeah, it's a full two. This is a bit of a surprise. He's got a good kicker in Cody Jones. Give the football to the up man. That's Markwell Cartwright. He's got a first down. He powered his way inside the 10. Cartwright, 190 pound redshirt sophomore out of High Point, North Carolina. Boy, both coaches, how about both coaches going for it on fourth down on their opening possession? Yeah, the difference is, though, Rod Broadway went <laughs> for it on fourth on uh, Richmond's 12, while Danny Rocco went for it on his own 39. Yes, he did. So this is first down and goal now from the nine. Marquel Cartwright offset, direct snap, Tariq Cohen. Trying to bounce outside. What a tremendous play that came from uh, off the edge. And in on that stop was David Norris. Norris wears number 24. That's not easy to do to track down Tariq Cohen in space. In space, this guy is a load, and that's a terrific job by David Norris. Fine outside linebacker. He goes to the wide side of the field. That's a loss of three. Norris making that solo stop on the ever dangerous Tariq Cohen. Well, again, it's uh, Olawafemi Bamiro, the fifth year senior. Off play action, fires end zone. It's caught. Denzel Keys, touchdown, North Carolina AT. Well, that's the, that's the play that you got to take away at the red zone. The slant is an easy throw, and he gets inside position. That big body, and I'll tell you, Bamero put it right on the money. Touchdown catch number 10 on the year for six foot four, 220 pound Denzel Keys. Doug Graber, you're an NFL guy. That young man has uh, the next league written all over him. Well, oh, absolutely. Uh, and both these teams have NFL receivers. Uh, Brian Brown for Richmond and, and that young man Keys right there. Cody Jones will add that PAT. So Olawafemi Bamiro trying to bounce back from last week. Delivered that dart. Touchdown for Denzel Keys. 7 0 North Carolina AT. Denzel Keys getting the congrats from his Aggie teammates. Absolutely. Just a tremendous wide receiving talent. Hauls in his. Tenth touchdown of the year. So seven zip, North Carolina AT. Great to have you along, everybody. Michael Regga, my partner, uh, the former Rutgers head coach, Doug Graber. As we're inside this beautiful sports facility here on the campus of the University of Richmond. And Doug, there's a good look at the starting quarterback, Kyle Lawletta. Lawletta's had an uh, extraordinary year. 24 TDs to just eight INTs and what an unfortunate injury and look at this list that's befallen Richmond. Yeah it's amazing they lost their first two tailbacks early the one last week to Laletta was devastating because he, he was having a great great year. Uh, you know <laughs> Joe Nelson outstanding defensive lineman. Uh, it's just been really tough. To David Jones was an All-American. Yep. Well, as Cody Jones was approaching, that football blew off the uh, the tee. As we said, it just a sun splash, beautiful late November afternoon. And you know, Kyle Lalletta wishes that uh, he could be uh, on the football field with his teammates. But he was very instrumental in getting Kevin Johnson back on the squad. Didn't we get the sense, head coach Danny Rocco? We felt that his intent was it gives them the best chance to stay on course with their offense. Absolutely. And uh, but the, the key was when that young man came to him last Monday Kevin Johnson. Now Dejon Brissett had that strong first uh, kickoff return to begin the day. This time he'll get corralled at the 20 yard line. So Kevin Johnson the young man from uh, Atlanta. Well, he has had a very heavy week. 
course, Danny Rocco, the head football coach, John Garrett, both the OC and the quarterback coach. Doug. Yeah, that was John Garrett. We just saw talking to Kevin, the first brother of Jason Garrett. Yep. Been with five different NFL teams, a veteran, veteran quarterback coach. All right, let's see what this second possession gets. Deontes Thompson, that lone back, off play action. Johnson going to take a shot. He'll rip it deep, and that's hauled in by Jamal Bevels. Hey, how about that throw off play action? You well, talk about play uh, throwing the football with accuracy, Doug. Well, that's this is what the coaching staff said. This young guy, the, the thing that he does best is throw the deep ball. And boy, I'll tell you what, he showed it right there. He put that one right on the money. That's the game plan. Run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, play action, and throw it down the field. 47 yards worth. Big play guy is Jamal Bevels. And Bevels, terrific separation there. On a 47 yard hookup now has Kevin Johnson. Let's see if that uh, sends the confidence through the roof, too. Johnson again, seam route. That's hauled in. Making the grab. Good move wow. from Tyler Wilkins. Look at Wilkins stay alive, dancing and darting his way inside the 10 for 24 more yards. Deion Jones, Tyree Andrews on the Aggie stops. How about the confidence that they showed Kevin Johnson uh, throwing up the first two plays of this series and look at the moves. Tyler Wilkins is 36 catch of the year. Was that was that the Xbox game. Which button is that <laughs> off the Xbox game. X. <laughs> I got to get the young folks to let me know about that. Great spin though from Tyler Wilkins. Now Deontes Thompson, good cut. Thompson got six down to the three yard line. Stopped by Deion Jones again. Doug Deontes Thompson though stepped in. What a week last week, 144 yards and a touchdown. Big and strong, uh, more of a north-south runner, inside runner, runs tough, has got good speed. He's not a guy that's going to make you miss a lot, but man, he runs north and south and he's got speed. Three plays and Kevin Johnson a good look into this 6 1 195 pound sophomore Johnson will keep the football touchdown Kevin Johnson Richmond. Yeah, th this is the game plan now this is an athletic quarterback and he can run and you're going to see a lot of play action you're going to see a lot of movement passes and he's I, I really suspect we're going to see some zone read from them offensively as well today. How about that for an answer a response from Kevin Johnson after the first series don't Jenna doesn't generate much. He rips two big throws Doug and then two plays later they're in the end zone. I talked to Kevin Johnson yesterday and I got to tell you I was very impressed with him. He's very calm. Uh, you know they were really concerned obviously in this situation with a guy who's never started a game but he's getting off to a heck of a start. Now, Doug now this is going to be interesting. We'll explain why you heard referee call from Carl Vaccaro and of course uh, any touchdown college for any level is reviewable. Yep. But Doug this is a Northeastern Athletic Conference crew. They don't use video review in the Northeast. Yeah and I'll tell you what that, that decision is being made uh, by John Bush upstairs and this is close. I don't know I, that that knee. Uh, it was well touched out on the field. Uh, there has to be evidence to overturn it. But look at his knee here. And when his knee is down, I don't think that ball's in. I, I, I personally think it should be spotted about the uh, two foot line. That's a real good look right there. Great job by yep. our ESPN uh, camera crew here inside Robin Stadium. And it did appear that from that look down the goal line, this is going to get overturned. Yeah, I, I believe it will be. Uh, Doug remember though it's got to be indisputable yep. video evidence the call on the field is touchdown. Yep. You have to have <laughs> indisputable that you could overturn that. Well you and I agree. Well we're, we're all right. <laughs> yeah you and I are all right. <laughs>
So we're not in any dispute, are no, we, Coach? And, and, no, and, 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 and really, I'm, they don't listen to us anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Should they? Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, nevertheless, even if uh, that football is going to get placed down and this is overturned, let's listen to referee Carl Vaccaro. After review, the runner's knee was down short of the goal line. It will be third down and goal from the half yard line. They got third it right. Third down and goal from the half yard line. They got it we will right. Start that's, the game clock on my whistle. That's an outstanding job by the officials on the field and the replay crew. All right, so this is still uh, a real good look at drive. This will be uh, just the uh, the fifth play coming up on this drive. Kevin Johnson will set down inside the one. Now this is third down and goal for Johnson out of that stack die. Deontes Thompson, he's not going to get there. Look at the surge from Zarius Lockhart, that free safety. Doug, this is the third time already that Lockhart has ste stepped into a gap and made a big hit. Big time hit right here. And, and this was the concern with this very athletic defense of North Carolina A&T. They're very athletic and their gap penetration and their quickness is going to be a problem. I'll tell you that this uh, Richmond coaching staff was certainly right about that. I got the jumbo look in here. That was for a loss of better than a yard. The red zone for Richmond. Thompson powers his way into the end zone. Deontes Thompson lowered his shoulder. Touchdown, Richmond. Well, Coach Rocco said the strength of this team is the offensive line, and he showed a lot of confidence in that offensive line twice going for it on fourth down already in this game. The touchdown maker, Deontes Thompson. That is his ninth TD on the year. Thompson has really been terrific after you mentioned with the loss of virtually their entire running back room. Thompson has really stepped up and uh, took away any issues they might have had done. And stayed healthy. Griffin Trow to add the PAT out of the, the, the hold of Will McCombs. Thompson. Lowered his shoulder would not be denied. We're tied at seven. Matching that North Carolina A&T touchdown throw to Denzel Keys, Deontes Thompson. And we're even at seven apiece. I think this has the makings of something real special, Doug Graber. Well, a common opponent. They both played Norfolk State. They both uh, won. A&T. Beat him 35 nothing. Richmond beat him 34 to nothing. Chris Garden, their fine return man, back uh, awaiting the shot of Ricky Siggers. But that football is uh, going to bounce by Deshaun McFadden. And that's a touchback in North Carolina AT. will start from the 20 yard line. So, folks, we came on the air today, and Coach Graber and I, for all the world, felt it was going to be Isaiah Hicklin. As the North Carolina AT starting quarterback, but the fifth year senior out of DC, Olawa Femi Bamiro, who struggled last week, just ripped that touchdown throw to Denzel Keys. Well, he's a senior and, uh, and he's a redshirt senior, so this is his his fifth year. He's 6'4, 211, and uh, he leads the uh, Aggies out for their second offensive series. Yeah, always train your eyes on 28 in white, Tariq Cohen. One of the most dynamic playmakers in the game, and this is Cohen off the zone read. Cohen got outside the numbers, bounced it outside. Tariq Cohen on that strong run. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 41. That's 16 yards. Omar Howard pushed him out. This is what defensive coordinator Chris Koss was worried about. He runs 4-3-5. If he gets loose, it is over. Now your time at Tampa Bay that's uh, in the old uh, NFC Central you had to prepare as a defensive coordinator for Barry Sanders twice a year twice a year buddy and I'll tell you what it, it was not fun now working underneath uh, that uh, that strike is thrown to Porter Abel Abel with just his eighth catch on the year Brendan Conacher on the hit out of the uh, the safety spot for Richmond. 
How about Bamiro? I mean, he, he really struggled last week. Uh, Michael, you called it. You gave the numbers. But, uh, boy, he has been right on the money in this huge playoff game. You know, it's been a long time. It's been 13 years since the Aggies have been in the playoffs. So this is huge for them. It has been 13 years. We'll tell you all about their celebration bowl that they went to a year ago. So after the Chris Garden catch, go back to the ground game. How about that open field hit? Outstanding from Omar Howard as he planted Markel Cartwright. Doug, it's going to bring up third down and five. Well, we talked about Omar Howard as being an impact player. <laughs> there was an impact right there. Good look at the 240 pound senior from Midlothian here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So now let's see what offensive coordinator Chip Hester and head coach Rod Broadway dial up third and five. Amiro triggering the throw broke it up. Tafon Mainsa got that big right hand up and broke up that uh, throw intended for Denzel Keys and the Aggies will punt the football. Well, defensive coordinator Chris Kosh put the dime defense on the field. Six defensive backs. They played cover two. They didn't read the coverage properly because the ball should not have gone to the flat. That's the corner sitting right there. All right, at fourth and four now. This is Steven Sawicki to punt it away. On that return for Richmond, did John Brissett. Brissett in open space. Brissett will accelerate it. See you later. Deshaun Brissett. Enormous punt return. Touchdown lightning bolt for Richmond. Well, he, he made the first two miss on his own. Take a look at it right here. He made one miss right there, and then from then on, buddy, it was blocked extremely well, making a nice cutback right there, and he is gone. Explosion plays, how they build momentum and get a team lifted. Dejan Brissett, 92 yard punt return TD. Griffith Trow to add his second PAT. Big play guy, Dejan Brissett to the house, 14 7, Richmond. Robin Stadium, the home of the Richmond Spiders, and we're delighted you're a part of our FCS first round Division One playoff matchup, all presented by our friends at Northwestern Mutual with Doug Graber. I'm Michael Regai, and oh, Dejan Brissett. A young man from outside Toronto, Ontario, Canada, with that 92 yard hit a moment ago. Now, this is Chris Garden from inside the five. Garden, nice kickoff return. Got knocked down at the 30 yard line. Micah Keels on that stop. All right, we showed you where the winner of Richmond, North Carolina, AT funnel into. Doug, that, uh, that defended national champion, North Dakota State. They are sitting there awaiting. They've got the number one seed <laughs> overall. And how about from the Colonial Athletic, James Madison? Yes, sir. Dukes James. have had a terrific year, have they not? Yes, they did. And they got the number four seed in the tournament. The top eight seeds uh, get the first week, uh, get a bye week the first week, and get a home game. All right, now trailing for the first time today. Let's see what uh, the senior quarterback, Femi Bamiro, gets. Well, look at that defense, but it's so hard. You got a swarm to Reek Cohen. Cohen battled his way to get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, the, the key here defensively, even as you pursue, you've got to keep your shoulders square to the line, and that's what they did right there because you've got to be ready for the cutback, and it happens fast. Winston Craig a part of that stop along with Lamont Johnson you see the rich, Richmond rush defense and they know that they have quite a task today with Tariq Cohen all right second and ten play action 
Now fire that throw to the outside and that's Denzel Keys making the grab as she was covered by Micah Keels. Move the sticks. Uh, Keys is so smooth, isn't he, Coach? Oh, he really is. You know, and he, he's got such great size, 6'4", 215. Uh, you know, he, he is just an outstanding. He's an NFL receiver in my mind. There's no question. And uh, Coach Rocco, he just gushed when talking about Denzel Keys. Yeah, it's funny. A red zone nightmare and matchup. So that's exactly what we got on yep. that Keys first touchdown. Play action now for Bamiro. Being chased through the football away. Did he get it across? He got it across the line of scrimmage. Now this Richmond crowd thought that Bamiro, as he was chased by Andrew Clyde, should have been hit for a grounding call. The pass across well. the line of scrimmage and number one was in the area. <laughs> in the area coach. <laughs> I'll tell you, Richmond is fortunate right there because Markel Cartwright was running 20 yards past the entire secondary. Yeah, he'd circled out of the backfield. Yeah. He had Cartwright. All right, second down at 10 now for the 41. Oh, little Femi Bamero. Trigger in the out. Put it on Elijah Bell. Look at Bell. Step through the tackle. He stepped through Micah Key's tackle. And that's a first down. That's a gain of 12. First down for Elijah Bell. This is a true freshman, Elijah Bell. And, and he's 6'3. Uh, and I'm, he is just as impressive as Denzel Keys. Oh, yeah. He, he, that's that kid right there, folks, will be an NFL player. He's amazing. So now for the uh, second time today, North Carolina A and T in Richmond territory. Oh, oh. That football's out. A lot of blue shirts on it. Markel Cartwright coughed it up, and Richmond Shelton Hodge has recovered the Cartwright fumble. That's his first fumble lost in 526 carries. He is a guy that's dependable with the. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Mark Wright. I thought it was uh, Tariq. Tariq has not had a fumble in 526 carries. They'll get him back in the game. Huge, huge break for Richmond. Huge. That Danny Rocco and of course uh, his his defensive coordinator. And that a terrific job that DC Bob Trot. They really love that. They got that sudden change here. And now they'll play on the short football field after they got to this young man making his first collegiate start. Kevin Johnson led the touchdown drive to tie it at seven before Dejan Brissett brought everyone to their feet with a 92 yard punt return. Four wide receivers now run the zone read. Well, Johnson got absolutely belted. That's Key Richardson. Richardson, his ninth tackle for loss on the year. What a hard hit he saw for he is. Yeah, and, and he missed the read right there. He, that was a give all the way uh, in terms of reading that defensive end. He'll, he'll learn from that. 210 pounder out of Gainesville, Florida. Keondrick Richardson, they call him Key. Now you see the numbers on the air. That's tackle for loss number nine. He took down Kevin Johnson, second and 11. Deion Trez Thompson threw a gaping hole. He's got a first down and a lot more. They stretched that out, Doug, and got terrific blocks from that O line to spring Thompson. This is the outside zone play, and that was a, a great job by Kleber, number 75, the right tackle, 6'8, 315. Uh, he, he really takes up a lot of space out there. That's a very talented offensive line. Thompson lost his footing. Going to lose three as well. Now, and I think he got his feet tangled with quarterback Kevin Johnson on that exchange. Yeah, that's what it looked like. And, and again, a new quarterback, and that's exactly what happened. Kevin Johnson's right foot caught his left foot, and down he went. But this offensive line now, uh, this is the one area of this football team that has not had injuries. And I'll tell you, Coach Rocco yesterday in our conversations, he, he put this game on the offensive line. They've got to perform for us to win. It's going to bring up a second at 13 now as Richmond embarks on the red zone. Thompson 
Boy, that hole closed out quick, did it not? Again, Keondrick Richardson on the hit. That's two big stops he's made solo on Deontres Thompson. Richmond has a, a, a huge size advantage with their offensive line. This is a gigantic group of offensive linemen against the smaller but quicker and very athletic front of North Carolina A&T. And I'll tell you that the key for them is they cannot have penetration. They didn't have penetration on that play. But you're right, Richardson, he, he's been very impressive at that middle linebacker spot. All right, Danny Rocco says we don't need to snap it. Let's walk to the other end as the first quarter comes to an end. The Richmond Spiders got the huge 92 yard punt return from Deshaun Brissett. Richmond on top 14 7. Second quarter next. Great to have you with us. The NCAA FCS first round presented by Northwestern Mutual on a just glorious November playoff afternoon. Great to have you along here on ESPN with Doug Graber and all of our crew. I'm Michael Regai. A lot of fireworks in the first quarter. Richmond with a couple of touchdowns erased the seven point deficit. 14 7 right now. Kevin Johnson will set up screen. Deontes Thompson trying to keep his foot in and uh, got knocked down. Thompson but stopped by Marcus Albert. And now is going to bring up a fourth down and the field goal unit is coming on the football field for head coach Danny Rocco. This would be Griffin trial that will attempt. He has had a great year. He's been 17 out of 20. But he's only two of four from the 40 to the 49. From the left hash from 39 yards out. Got enough leg and he hit it. Well able to connect his Griffith trowel. From 39 yards out where he's a perfect 10 for 10 lead 10 Richmond. So Griffin Trow connected he's out 10 for 10 from uh, the distance of 39 yards and in on the season and Richmond's got the, their lead at 10 here for head coach Danny Rocco. Yeah and okay coach Rocco both these coaches are very similar they both have been at the FBS level they both have done total turnarounds uh, coach uh, Rocco did it at Liberty. Coach Broadway did it at Grambling and North Carolina Central, and he's done it again here at North Carolina A&T. So let's see now, as we just get underway at quarter number two, how North Carolina A&T will respond. Now down uh, by double digits for the first time today. Chris Garden on the run up from the eight. Garden is a terrific return man, but he got cut down there. As a hit on the backside, Madison Day, a senior special teams backup linebacker, as we take a look at his field goal. Boy, look at this thing just at the last second, mm. barely sneak in that left upright. <laughs> Boy, he's excited about yeah. it, huh? That's great. Griffin Trowell put some, <laughs> some kicking English on that. You're right, Doug. He just managed to sneak that in. All right, let's uh, go back here to this North Carolina A&T offense. That's Olawa Femi Bamiro. We didn't think he was going to get the call today, but he did. And he's gone the entire way off play action. He'll work underneath. He's got Leroy Hill. Hill made the grab. Hill, the 240-pound sophomore tight end, right at the sticks, 10-yard grab. Omar Howard on the hit for Richmond. Young man out of Smith, North Carolina. I'm amazed that you know I, I looked at the tape and I'll tell you this is a different quarterback that I saw last week. Yeah Doug as we mentioned he was just 12 of 33 last week that's only 36 percent as you look at Omar Howard. Now back to the ground game and a stout front from Whitstead Craig of Richmond. Craig got some help from Omar Howard as they were able to uh, stack up the running back Tariq Cohen. Cohen has not been really able to get on track today. Cohen was six carries for 
22 yards his long of 16. So with the day he bounced that one uh, to the outside Doug but other than that he hadn't been out the back door. No he averages 7.6 per carry which is a uh, uh, pretty gaudy numbers. Bamiro on second and long wants to fire the out and it was broken up. Broken up by Micah Keels. That throw intended for Elijah Bell. Third and long. Yeah, had some pressure on the quarterback here, uh, but it's really a pretty good throw in the end. But he, he took a pretty good shot. But boy, Micah Keels uh, did an excellent job against Bell. This will be third down and nine now. This line to uh, make is. At the 46 yard line, Oluwafemi Bamiro. He came on and engineered the overtime win over FBS Kent State back in week two for North Carolina AT. And now, time Rod out. Broadway wants North a timeout, Doug. Yeah, there was something North wrong with the out. formation, and Denzel Keys kept motion to the sideline. There's something screwed up here. And uh, finally, Coach Broadway uh, called the timeout, and they'll get that formation uh, straightened out here before they go back out. All right, let's take a look at the other side of the bracket. We came on at the air today showing you where uh, Richmond and uh, the North Carolina A&T winner will funnel into. Let's go back and revisit that. So there you see it, Doug. The winner today has got to go to uh, seventh seed North Dakota. Uh, we got North Dakota in, North Dakota State in, yep. South Dakota State in. The Dakotas very uh, well represented. So I-29 is going to be busy in the Dakotas for the next couple of weeks. Hey, North Dakota State has won it five years in a row. Yeah, that is have. unprecedented. Yep. And by the way, uh, in Frisco, Texas, the championship game will be played on uh, January the 7th, and you'll see that right here on the family of networks on ESPN2. This is the first North Carolina a and FCS playoff berth in 13 years. The fifth in their program history. Of course, their MEAC conference, though, dropped their automatic qualifier. Bamiro fired his throw too tall for Xavier Griffin, incomplete. And after the timeout, uh, they don't move the chains, and North Carolina AT got to put the football away. Well, I'll tell you, they, they, they better be careful because uh, the last one. Dijon Brissett took it 92 yards. They better get some hang time and some coverage. Yeah, booting that football out of there. And they want to keep it away from Brissett. It's going to angle out of bounds at the 32 yard line. That's where Richmond will start. Broad Broadway squad in a 10 point hole when we get back. Great to have you long as Richmond holds a 17 7 lead over North Carolina A&T ESPN's coverage of the SCS championships continue next weekend second round coverage right here on ESPN 3 for more info go to NCAA.com that's the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships Michael Regai my partner Doug Graber our producer Steve Johnson director Sam Ramos and all of our Terrific ESPN crew and boy if you like picturesque settings with the college football it's here right in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Oh this is a beautiful campus and a beautiful setting you're absolutely correct. All right from the 32 yard line Kevin Johnson making his first career start flags whistle is going to cost Richmond five. Yeah, I think the tight end kind of flinched a little bit. False start offense number 84. Five yard penalty, the team first down. So look at Rod Broadway. That's a second penalty on Richmond. It's cost him 20 yards. You know, and, and these two defenses are totally different. Uh, North Carolina AMT is a, is a gap penetrating style of defense. Richmond is a two gap defense. So that kind of bodes well for them against a great back like Cohn. Two gap operator. being. Please reset the game clock to 12:58. One, two, five, eight. Thank you. Two gap means those defensive linemen are going to take that offensive lineman nose up, 
and hopefully be able to escape either side. They got two gaps. Of course, uh, the Aggies, they are penetrating one gap. They get in that gap and they try to penetrate. First at 50, you know, Doug Brian Brown, the outstanding wideout, has been quiet here for Richmond today. Johnson to put it up. Pressure coming. The football's out. On it is North Carolina A&T Marquise Raglan on that fumble return as Kevin Johnson got absolutely walloped. And watch right here. They just kind of look at the ball. They, they I, I, I thought they didn't think it was a fumble. We're going to replay this. Raglan put a big shot on quarterback Kevin Johnson. Now let's see. This will have to be reviewed. And we'll see. Was his arm coming forward uh, that they will take a look at it from a couple different angles? Doug, what do you think? That arm coming forward? I, I thought the arm was coming forward. I, I, I believe that this will be overturned, but because that's my opinion. Well, how about the hit from uh, Marquise Raglan, the 280 pound fifth year senior? Now it was called a fumble on the field and uh, in fact uh, the North Carolina Aggies they were slow getting on the football. I think they thought it was an incomplete pass. Well what do you think Mike. Yeah you know Doug I think they're going to stick with this and say that that football and the arm was not coming forward okay. and that football was out and it's going to stay as a fumble. But there's number 99 Marquise Raglan who put that huge shot on Kevin Johnson. Yeah he's been a good one. He's a redshirt junior. It's 35 straight starts. You know both these teams uh, it's amazing the amount of redshirt players that get the extra year. 16 starters for the Aggies are, are red shirt players. In other words, they've they've have sat out a year and developed 13 for Richmond. Both these coaches develop players yeah. and that's how you do it. You red shirt them and bring them along. They don't get the five star recruits. Now, Coach I wanted to bring that point up to you because from that that aspect of coaching at this level. You know we we've called the FCS playoffs for many many years yep. and you do see that. But we see teams years in succession and you could just tangibly see it young athletes develop the call on the field stands first down North Carolina a and so Kevin Johnson will turn over the football after he got rocked by Marquise Raglan and that's going to set up the Aggies of North Carolina a t in the red zone with a chance to get back into this one. For head coach Rod Broadway. Well, on the first series, they got the football about the 30 yard line when they went forward on fourth down and didn't get it. Now, great field position again. Tariq Cohen offset with Bamiro. Whistles, flags, false start. North Carolina AT. Yeah, both teams uh, feeling the, the heat here a little bit. False start. Offense, number 61. Repeat first down. That was Joshua Maddox, the left guard, that uh, got a little antsy. Remember, you got those big, tall, wide receivers, tough in the red zone. Not about that, but Mira will gun that throw. That was almost picked off. But Denzel Keyes tried to secure it, couldn't secure it, and Tafon Mainsa for Richmond Doug almost had a gift. He really did, and this ball was uh, was thrown a little bit too far ahead of Keyes, and that that almost was. And, and if he'd have got, if he would have picked that, he was gone. He had a lot of real estate ahead of him, and now he's going to bring up a second down and a 15 for the 23. And this is a wild Direct snap. Cat. Yep. It'll be a direct snap to Tariq Cohen to Markwell Cartwright offset with three wide receivers. Cohen. Going to run that football and Richmond had that uh, sensed out. That's just good film study is it not Doug as Andrew Clyde made the hit third down and long. 
Yeah, uh, defensive coordinator Chris Kosh. Uh, this is exactly what. And there's the two gap right there. That was a great job by the defensive end. He took the tight end, and he could have escaped either way. That's two gap defense. That's what it's all about. 0 for 3 this afternoon on third downs. The North Carolina AT offense. They need a big pickup here. Line to make down at the nine. On third and 15, Bamiro will step up, throw Enzo. Broken up and almost picked off by Tafon Mainza as he was looking for Denzel Keys. Mainza uh, gives up about five to six inches, Doug, on Keys. Yeah, this was not a well thrown football. And I'll tell you, Keys, this was an interception. And watch Keys come in right there with that right hand and strip it. That's a great job of Keys playing defense. Now it's going to be a 40 yard field goal try now. Cody Jones is one for four on 40 yard plus field goals. Let's see if he can get this one in. He's got a little slight wind at his back. Right hash mark. The operation is clean. Well, Jones with a lot of leg, but he pulled it wide left and missed it. That's a huge missed opportunity for the Aggies. The lead remains 10 for Richmond Spiders. They've got the football when we get back. 52 degrees. Yeah. Beautiful foliage around here. Roberts Stadium on the campus of the University of Richmond. Richmond 17-7 lead. First round FCS playoffs. Michael Regat, Doug Graber, glad you're along. Kevin Johnson, this young sophomore from Atlanta, making his first college start for head coach Danny Rocco. Just a bit roll last year. Run that quarterback draw. And Johnson got five on that first down carry as he was tripped up. That's what Rocco was telling us. He, he, he felt that Johnson could keep him on schedule offensively, but he does have that dimension of being able to run the football, though. Yeah, totally different dimension. And, and uh, they've made some changes offensively, obviously, to fit his abilities, the quarterback draw. We've seen a lot of play action, movement passes. He's very athletic. And a second down call now. Johnson to put it up. Fired the out, and that was hauled in. Julius Reynolds uh, dropped Tyler Wilkins, who made the catch. And though, though conspicuous by the absence is their leading receiver, Brian Brown. Doug. Yeah, you know, Brian Brown has, has caught a pass in 36 consecutive games as we look at the replay. And of course, he hasn't caught one yet. And they move him around in this offense to get him the ball. They have not been successful here in the first half. Well, here's a good look at Brian Brown. Now, you know, give a little credit, too. There's some bracket coverage yep. from North Carolina and T. They've done a nice job off play action. Come underneath. And that throw is caught, but an excellent tackle by Marcus Albert as Albert was able to hit and drop Richmond's. That was tight Steven, ends. Yeah, Steven, Steven Jacob, Jacob yep. on that catch. Yep. They play four tight ends. And you're going to see a lot of two tight end, even three tight end offense uh, from Richmond. Second down and long now. That uh, hookup from Johnson to tight end Steven Jacob. And we got three. We call it second and seven as we approach 10 minutes left. Richmond by 10. Johnson going to come underneath in the seam. That throws caught by Garrett Hudson. Hudson ran free in the secondary to the 28 yard line. Tyree Andrews and Keandre Richardson on the stop. 32 yard pitch and catch. Johnson making Out, it work. Outstanding read by Kevin Johnson. This is a three deep zone, and that's where the ball's got to go into that seam. Nice job, Garrett, Garrett Hudson, 6'4", 250. There's his numbers, as you see, for big Garrett Hudson. That's his 25th catch of the year. Big one there. Run that jet sweep with Brian Brown. Brown in open space. Brian Brown's got 12 yards. Zarius Lockhart on the stop. Well, there's a way, Coach Graber, to get him the football. Can't find him in the pass game. Run the fly sweep. Absolutely. 6'2", 205. Very, very smart football player. 
Nice job right there, but I'll tell you, he is an outstanding, outstanding receiver. 67 catches, almost 1,200 yards and nine touchdowns for that man, Brian Brown. You remember Danny Rocco, we asked him specifically, you like to run your jet sweep? Nah, not really. <laughs> but, but when you need to get the football in the hands of your playmaker, that could change. Absolutely. Now Johnson will keep the football, and he just uh, got swarmed on. Well, you see the, the way North Carolina ain't T. Doug, Marquise Ragland, they scrape off blocks and run to the football. They really do. And, you know, uh, this uh, Aggie defense, they were eighth in the NCAA in their rushing defense. They give up 2.8 per carry against them, and that is shown today. Uh, they really uh, pursue, very athletic, good in their gap responsibility. Sam Washington, the defensive coordinator, he's done a great job with this group. All right, Kevin Johnson, six of seven for 118 yards now. Off play action. Going to take a shot, Edzo. Too tall for Brian Brown. Well, he wanted to put it up where Brown could go high point that, Doug, but overthrew him. Yeah, he, he needed about eight inches uh, more height to get to that one. That was a, a definitely a high throw. Not much chance right here. And that's a great job knocking the coverage off, too. He did have the outside route open. Well, and number nine in white, Zarius Lockhart, Red Shoe Junior out of Auburn, Alabama. I wonder who he's, he's rooting for in the Iron Bowl today. Yeah. Hey, well, he's good. been, he, I'll tell you what, he's been tremendous today he in has that secondary. Been absolutely tremendous. All right, this is third and 10 now. Johnson, going to go in zone. Got it. Brown, did he get his oh. foot down? He did not. As that throw will go incomplete. Well, let's check it. It was Jamal Bevels. It was Bevels who was running that pylon out route. Yeah, and, and he's open. The throw forces him to get off of his feet right there. And no, that's a great call by the officials on the field. He definitely did not get a foot down inbounds. Now well, Jamal Bevels with that outstanding. Attempt to try to drag that foot wasn't able to do it. So this is Griffin Trow from 33 yards out and Trow banged it off the <laughs> upright and somehow got it to sneak over that, that crossbar. But he and that left crossbar today, he barely snuck the one in and, and he, he bounced that one off of him. Well, Griffin Trow has uh, connected for the second time today. Now, uh, Doug, check the ball. That, that ball moved a lot, didn't it? Yep, it really did. And for that, that, hey, another uh, inch and a half the other way, and it comes straight back at him. Two for two, 39 and 33. So, uh, Doug Graber, that's if my mathematics is correct, that's 11 for 11 now. Uh, inside of 39 yards on the year for Griffin trial. Yeah, very, very consistent. He's been a, he's done a great job this year. Uh, Ricky Seegers, their other kicker, is for the distance guy. I think anything uh, over 40 yards, we'll, we'll see Seegers, number 42 in the game, kicking it. But he has been, he's had a great, great year. He's now 19 out of 22 for the season. Now Richmond, who joins Villanova, and New Hampshire, and of course, James Madison, the Dukes, 8 0 in the CAA this year. Four squads from the CAA here in the FCS playoffs. This will be Chris Garden again from the eight. Garden kept that return alive as he bounced over the 30 yard line. So, decent operating position here. As the offense of Rod Broadway back at the football field, it dug eight carries for 23 yards for uh, the All American, Tariq Cohen. Will they be able to get him established? And how do they try to find some explosion plays against this Richmond D? Well, to, first of all, uh, they're, they're two gap front uh, defensively. That front seven has done a masterful job against Tariq Cohen. And of course, uh, now you got those two great outside receivers. They got to get them the ball. And here is Isaiah Hicklin, who we thought was going to get the start today. 
He's going to run straight quarterback draw. And Hicklin maybe got a couple. Andrew Clyde, who wears number 97, pinched down from his DN spot to make the stop. So Dougie's a sophomore out of Monroe, South Carolina. Hadn't seen a lot of playing time. Redshirted, moved to wide receiver. And Rod Broadway told us he was going to play him today. Yeah, he just uh, he, he moved about halfway through the season when they had their other injuries at quarterback. Hicklin had that throw deflected and batted down as making that deflection was David Norris off that corner linebacking spot. And Norris got that big paw. A sprint out pass, and that's a really, really well played uh, uh, David Norris. So it read it, the outside backer on a sprint out, he's got to get with. And he got it, and made a heck of a play. Well, Doug, you notice on third and long, I just a personnel grouping six, six new defenders come out of the football field for Richmond on this third down and eight. Yeah, a couple of uh, pass rush uh, specialists in the defensive line, and a couple more defensive backs. That's a dime defense, six DBs on the field. Hicklin gonna throw that tunnel screen, making the grab. Elijah Bell, look at him accelerate. Elijah Bell pushed out of bounds at the three yard line tunnel screen on third and eight for 65 yards from Elijah Bell. Well, and I'll tell you what, it, this is a 6 2 freshman wide receiver that can run. He's got good speed, and uh, he's from uh, West Virginia. And how the Mountaineers uh, let him get away, I'll never know. Look at that. Boy, he can really pick him up and land down. He is a 210-pound wide receiver. Well, you talk about a pair with size, speed, strength, great hands, Denzel Keys and Elijah Bellaret. Now out of that straight eye, this is Tariq Cohen. Football came out late. Richmond says they've got it. They've forced the turnover from Tariq Cohen. That's his first fumble lost in over 530 consecutive carries. Unbelievable. Pure isolation play. Got the right hand in right there. That was Winston Craig. Got the right hand in and knocked that football out. It looked like Andrew Clyde on the recovery. Oh, just tremendous defensive work. And Rod Broadway is saying, what? My guy Tariq Cohen never gives the football no, up. Never. Well, second fumble of the game for the Aggies, and uh, and this one really hurts. They're re really getting ready to punch it in for a score to make it 20 to 14. Well, they got that enormous tunnel screen from wide receiver Elijah Bell, and now they turn the football over on downs. Johnson out of play action guns that throw on time made a terrific throw as he was able to hook up with Jacob again Stephen Jacob the tight end made the grab now Stephen Jacob of the four tight ends he's kind of the half wide receiver hybrid uh, tight end but he can run he's got wide receiver type skills. That's well, back to back catches on drives now that's 20 on the hookup and how about Danny Rocco said go play action and throw out of the how end zone. How about that first and 10 uh, you've got a quarterback making his first start your own 10 yard line showed a lot of confidence in Kevin Johnson right there. Big 20 yard hookup as we approach a six minute mark Richmond by 13. Uh, we got a whistle stopping it. Time out. Richmond. First charge time That's out. the first the time first out Richmond will take. 30 second charge team timeout. Yeah, that was a formation issue. Uh, they were misaligned. Uh, Richmond uses a ton of different personnel groupings, a lot of different formations, a lot of motion. That shows the the uh, uh, offensive coordinator John Garrett. And again, you talk about adversity, boy. Look at that. This has been some year for Coach Rocco. Joe Nelson was an outstanding defensive lineman. David Jones was a returning All-American safety. He, he says that's the best football player on our team. Uh, he broke his forearm last year and had another issue with it this year. And of course, all the ACL injuries, their top two running backs gone for the year. 
Uh, man, I'll tell you, that's tough to deal with. So on first to 10 for the 26 yard line now is Manny Rocco show great confidence of Johnson blitz coming Johnson will escape Kevin Johnson using his legs got six on that as he saw that pressure coming from the left side Keondrick Richardson on the stop. Well, he, he's an athlete. He's a football player, and, and you're right. He, he, there was a free agent unblocked on him. He made a good decision there. Second and four. The clock moving with five and a half left after that huge stop inside the five by Richmond's D, forcing the Tariq Cohen fumble. Kevin Johnson going to set up the screen. This is DeAndres Thompson. Thompson got knocked out of bounds by Zarius Lockhart, but that should be enough to move the sticks. What a screen game. Doug, how about the confidence and trust Danny Rocco is showing in Kevin Johnson? Yeah, that, that's really quite amazing. And uh, and he's responded. He, he's been, you know, his, I thought his first play of the game, he looked a little shaky there, but other than that first play, uh, he has been really solid. On the 37 yard line now as Kevin Johnson's led this drive from inside the five. Johnson on the waggle right. He's going to keep the football. Tried to uh, shift his way outside the numbers and got pushed out of bounds. Marcus Albert made the hit. I, I, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit surprised at how much they're throwing the football here. They definitely really cut back on their drop back part of their passing game. And we knew it was going to be more play action and more movement passes. But uh, boy, they're showing a tremendous amount of confidence in this young man making his first career start in a playoff game. Bring up second down and six now from the 41 yard line. Go well, back to the ground game, and that's the second yep. time here. Deontrez Thompson looks like uh, on the exchange at that mesh point, tripped over the foot of quarterback Kevin Johnson. You know, and, and if you really think about it, Kevin Johnson's had two real days of practice, and take a look at it right here. Yeah, there it is again, uh, and again, that's just something that you've got to have a thousand reps on to get the timing and the footwork and everything else. That's hurt him twice now today. Gonna break up a third down and eight. See what Kevin Johnson comes up with. Line to make up of the 47. Gonna trigger the out. That's hauled in. That's a first down for Richmond as Tyree Andrews made the hit, but not before Garrett Hudson, the big junior tight end, moved the chains. Yeah, this was an empty set. Ball came out early. Uh, when he went in doubt, get it to the big guy. And he delivered. From the midfield stripe. Remember, this drive started. Now going to get a gadget play come out. Johnson wants to unload deep for Brown and he was trying to separate. We do have a flag. It looks like it's going to go. On North Carolina A&T might be a defensive hold that could get called on Zarius Lockhart. How about this for some razzle dazzle. Boy, he took a shot as he delivered the ball, and yeah, there was definitely some holding there. No question about that. To the pass, holding Bring out defense, the gadget play. Number yep. nine. Ten yard penalty. Automatic. First down. And really, you know, he, he didn't have to hold him because that ball was uh, uh, underthrown anyway. I, he he would have been obviously could have made that play without holding. Uh, now at the 40 yard line again as we're inside three minutes left it's 
Kevin Johnson from under center. And I'll run that lead power on the ground game and Deontrez Deontes Thompson got a couple Thompson off that big 144 yard performance last week in the loss. To William and Mary Justin Cates made the hit for North Carolina A&T. Yeah, these Aggies they are tough to run the football on and that that's really been their kind of what they their mantra they they are going to make it tough to run on. They play that gap defense they penetrate the linebackers really run only give up 2.8 per rush and they're they're tough to run against. Well you see uh, the uh, the M.O. here for the uh, head coach Danny Rocco he'd like to see, be able to put points on the board use up all this first half and not let A.T. get their hands back on it. Yeah well it's a third and eight now. Yeah. And it's really right in the hands of uh, Kevin Johnson again. Not the big tight end here Stephen Jacob offset. Now to the left of Kevin Johnson third and eight. Johnson going to unload deep. It could play in that battle with Jamal Bevels with Zarius Lockhart. We got a flag in the end zone Doug now how about Coach, I'm going to ask you a lot of pushing for separation from both football players. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, of course, you know, I'm an old NFL secondary coach. Interference, defense. Uh, I don't know about that one. I, that was, uh, that was shaky in my opinion. They got Zarius Lockhart on yeah. that call, Rod Broadway. I'm going to. I'm going to go out on a real limb. Coach Graber say he agrees with you. Yeah, I, I did not think that was interference. I really didn't. Yep. Yeah. Tell you what, the Spiders are pretty fortunate they got that call now with a minute and 20 here in the left of the first half. Yeah, we'll see how Danny Rocco approaches this. They'd like to come out with points. They're going to go play action. Johnson. All kinds of time. Now his throw almost wound up getting picked off as he pushed it too hard. It complete off the left hand. Garrett Hudson was running <laughs> free from me to you, Doug. Yeah, and uh, look, boy, this kid is an athlete. Kind of just pushes it out to him. They're lucky that didn't go the other way. That's a mistake right there. You've got to get, put it right on the numbers. All right, this is the tenth play of the drive. Remember, this drive started inside their own five. Yep. After Richmond forced the Tariq Cohen fumble. And three penalties have helped him. <laughs> yep. All right, on second and ten. Go back to the ground game. Thompson, good cut. Spun his way off a hit and got planted at the 17 yard line by Jeremy Taylor. Jeremy Taylor, number 48, folks, has had just a phenomenal season from his linebacking spot for head coach Rod Broadway. He really has a former walk on, four interceptions. 10.5 tackles for loss. He's got to give him the Aggies a great, great year. Is it just a junior? We're at approaching 30 seconds left on third and four. Coming underneath Johnson's throw. It could plead off the outstretched hands of Deontes Thompson. So let's go get the field goal team out again. And Griffin Trow's going to have another shot. To add three on the board. Yeah, and Kevin Johnson misfired uh, on uh, two uh, throws in this uh, series right here. That was a tough one right there because he was wide open, easily could have had the first down. This will be from 34 yards out now, out of the hold of Will McCombs. The long snapper is Graham Latham from 34 yards out. Griffith Trow, he's belted through his third field goal make of this one. It ups the lead to 23-7 Richmond. Hope you're enjoying this this afternoon. Richmond, three field goals today from Griffith Trow has this lead bumped up to 23-7. And now on that kickoff return after Trow has uh, just hit his third. 
Richmond's going to leave it short. We only got 19 seconds left in this first half. And of course, coming up at halftime, we'll give you a look see at how this FCS football championship in Division One is going to shake out. On the next five weeks, going to be a lot of fun to decide a champion, Doug. Boy, I love the playoffs. I, I just wish that we could get to the point where we could expand the number of teams in the FBS yeah. playoffs. Yeah. So, in uh, that very tight formation, uh, the uh, quarterback Isaiah Hicklin is going to take that knee, and that's going to do it. Going to be the final snap we'll get. That is a, uh, I would say, a pretty exciting first 30 minutes of football. Boy, a lot of big plays on both sides. The 92-yard punt return uh, by Brissett was the biggest by far. Yeah, Brissett uh, hit that one big, and of course Elijah Bell had that huge uh, bubble screen that took Rod Broadway's offense inside the five, but then they turned it over on that fumble and could not convert. All right, we are joined by the very successful head football coach of the Aggies of North Carolina a t Rod Broadway Rod Michael Reg Doug Graber. Uh, you've had a couple opportunities deep couldn't come away with points. How would you assess you play two quarterbacks and what you've got accomplished offensively short of getting the football in the end zone. Well, you have to clean up a lot of things. You know, we had two turnovers, had a punt return for a touchdown. We had two pass interference calls and just not playing clean football right now. We just need to clean some things up and get an opportunity to put the ball in the end zone. We just need to score. Hey, Coach, uh, I'll tell you what, your two wide receivers, Bell and Keys, wow, are they impressive. <laughs> uh, Bell's just a freshman. He's going to be special. And Keys had an outstanding career for us. So we got to find a way to get those guys some touches in the second half. Rod, appreciate it. Best of luck to you in your Aggies second half. Thank you, sir. Right, thank you. That's Rod Broadway. As we said, outstanding job as a head football coach of North Carolina A&T. His squad's down by 16 right now. Probably could be worse. But their defense has held Griffith Trout a three Richmond field goal. So I don't go away. Doug and I'll get you back, take you through halftime in a moment. The Richmond Spiders, a squad of the FCS semifinals a year ago. Trying to get this home win and round number one of the FCS playoffs. Got this 23 to 7 lead over North Carolina A&T at the break. I'm Michael Regga. I'm a partner, Doug Graber. We take a look at uh, the first side of the bracket. And of course, uh, North Dakota State uh, with that top seed. And you see the four games going on today in this side of the bracket. There's eight games being played today, all of them right here on ESPN3 that we know you'll be enjoying all day long. And of course, from the Colonial uh, Athletic Association, the Dukes of James Madison, that number four seed, and they won the CAA this year. Now, Doug, on the other side, here is where Richmond and North Carolina A&T are today, and uh, the winner is going to get a trip to the state of North Dakota to face uh, the seventh squ seed squad in the playoffs. Yeah, and I, in, in talking to our conversation with Coach Rocco, he, he kind of likes that matchup against North Dakota. You know, they play a similar style offense and defense. And uh, of course, last year he got beat in the semifinals by right. North Dakota State, the, yes. the, the national, the one who uh, obviously won it for the fifth, uh, fifth straight year. All right, let's take a look. Uh, we had a lot of two o'clock starts. Uh, let's see how uh, this uh, scoreboard takes a look today. Well, Villanova, the Cats in Philadelphia with a 31-7 uh, lead at halftime. New Hampshire did all that from the uh, the CAA also with a lead. 24-0 uh, Chattanooga shutting out Weber State at the half. Good one going on as Charleston Southern visits Wofford. Uh, later on tonight, Samford goes into Youngstown State to battle the Penguins in uh, San Diego with Cal Poly out on the yeah. West Coast. The one surprise to me is uh, Illinois State up on Central Arkansas, 10 uh, Brock Speck with his uh, outstanding football squad. All right, don't go away here. 23-7, we'll take a look at how we got to this point with Doug and I come back after this time out. Uh, top of North Carolina, A&T has been uh, big plays for 
the Richmond Spiders uh, here in the opening half that has to please head coach Danny Rocco Danny Michael Regai and yep. Doug Graber uh, Kevin Johnson has acquitted himself beautifully how much confidence did you have with him coming into today that he could keep your offense on schedule well he's had a, a really good week of practice so I felt uh, very confident that he'd be able to go out there and execute the offense I think that a uh, little disappointed we're not running the ball a little better right now I thought we would uh, they changed how they're playing defensively. They had been a very much up the field vertical charging defensive front. They're doing a lot of stunting. We didn't really practice against that much this week, so had to adjust some things here in the locker room. Coach, your defense, your two gap defense has held Cohen to 18 <laughs> yards rushing. Boy, have they done a masterful job on him. Yeah, Coach, I think, uh, you know, to this point, everything is by design, you know, and it's exactly the way that we presented it. Uh, all week long but obviously as everyone knows there's a lot of football to play and uh, he can get loose in a heartbeat so we got to keep setting the edges we got to keep keep him inside and in front we got to keep tackling Danny will turn you loose thank you best okay. of luck in the second thanks half. a lot appreciate it Danny Rocco head football coach of the Richmond Spiders my partner and I really like one another and we're we are doing uh, doing our own dance here Michael Regai Doug Graber and of course in that it was big plays and Kevin Johnson was a huge part of it they've reeled off 23 unanswered points coach Graber after of course uh, the Denzo Keys touchdown grab got uh, a t on the board early. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, but Coach is right. He, he thought they'd be able to run the football a lot better. They're only averaging 3.0 per rush uh, against uh, this A&T defense. They've done a, a nice job, and he's right. I think they're, we're going to see them try to run the football a little more here. All right, that's Denzel Keys. Now, that puts uh, Richmond on top 7 nothing, and, and then you see the touchdown tie from running back uh, Deontes Thompson. Now, here's where the fireworks started. How you like a 92-yard <laughs> Uh, return from Jacoby Brissett. This was electrifying. It really was, and he made two miss uh, right at the point there, and then the cutback on the sideline right there, and it was very, very well blocked. 92 yard punt return, biggest play of the game. Yeah, 14 7 there, and from that point on, it's three Griffith trial field goals. However, Elijah Bell off this tunnel screen thought he had six for a and T. That was a great effort to, to get him knocked out of bounds there and and this was the key right here. His first fumble in over 530 attempts. Uh, that was Cohen that fumbled the football. Absolutely incredible. Griffin trial as we said three field goal makes from 39 from 33 and from 34. We take a look at the numbers 18 yards rushing and that's your big one here. 153 year passing yards for Kevin Johnson. Absolutely outstanding. Two A and T turnovers have really hurt their offensive effort. Third quarter coming up. Richmond's lead is 16. How about another half of football here? Let's see if North Carolina A&T down 23 to 7 can mount something here at quarter number three. It's Chris Garden on this kickoff return. Garden, one of the best in the FBS. And that shows you why he's still alive to the 44 yard line Chris Garden he jumped in and out of a couple of different tackles Doug and uh, kept this kickoff return alive. Yeah, he, he's a great return guy he broke the NCAA record last year for punt returns he averaged 23 yards per punt return. All right, so down 16, and uh, you heard head football coach Rod Broadway tell us. Uh, he said, we have got to, we have opportunities, been in the red zone, got to cash in, though, after big explosion plays. Absolutely, and uh, and again, you've got those, that, and they've got to get uh, Tariq Cohen going. They have to. Well, he's going back to Femi Bamiro, so he's played both Bamiro, who got the start, and Isaiah Hicklin. Good operating position here. Bamiro on that zone read. Cohen got outside the back door. Look, Look out. out. Tariq Cohen with speed. Cohen will get run out of bounds. Near the 10 yard line by Brendan Conacher. They'll spot it at the 13. This is what he does. <laughs> he's, he's only 5'7. He gets lost back there. And boy, once he gets a crack. Four, three, five. He's got great speed. 
Forty five yards for Tariq Cohen. Oh, that obviously his largest run of the afternoon. Red zone right away now. There you see the big numbers for Cohen. Single season record. Again, zone read to the outside. Cohen tries to dip outside the numbers. He's got to step out of bounds. He managed to get a couple. Well, he's fun to watch, and I'll tell you what I noticed really watching on tape yesterday uh, Denzel Keys is a great blocker downfield. He's so big, 6'4, the wide receiver, 215, but boy, does he, he can flat block downfield, and that's what they need to break loose Mr. Cohen. They'll bring up a second down and eight. So Cohen got a couple. And again, now Oluwafemi Bamiro is quarterbacking here. Cohen in that pistol now directly behind. And this is Tariq Cohen. Not much there. Not much there. How about the stop as a Cohen got uh, tracked down by DeAnthony Muse. Muse, who wears number 96, made the hit. Yeah, and I tell you that this defense has done a great job on Cohen today, but it's just a matter of time. He's going to find something eventually. Well, here's been a big problem, Doug. We talk about not converting in the red zone. Overall today on third down, the AT offense just one of six on converts. Yeah, that's not going to get it no. in, a, in a playoff game. Third down, and let's call it eight. Bamiro going to throw the fade for Keys. Too tall. Missed him incomplete. Boy, what a job today than Micah Keels. Keels now does have size. Big corner. 6'390. He's done on Keys. What he, what he does right here is he gets a great jam on Keys and totally throws the timing of that fade route off. You can't blame the quarterback. The receiver's got to get off the jam for the timing to work. Well, fourth and eight, and Rod Broadway wants to put some points on the board. So we'll send out Cody Jones. Jones out of the hold of Garrett Nestor. This will be a straight in front of the sticks from 28 yards. And that kick is good. So Cody Jones connects to bring the North Carolina AT deficit back to 10. 23 10 when we get back. Our Division One FCS football championship first round being brought to you by the good folks at Northwestern Mutual. Michael Regai, Doug Graber, hope you're enjoying this afternoon. Is Danny Rocco's squad trying to make some things happen? They've uh, Rod Broadway and they just got that uh, that three points on the board. 23-10 now. So Doug, they're, they're back inside a two-possession football game here early third. Now they got to worry about Dejon Brissett. Yeah, that's exactly right. He, he is uh, back there as one of the return guys. Now, Brissett electrified on that 92 yard punt return. He's going to get a shot from the six. Dejon Brissett. Outside the numbers. Excellent return by Brissett. You know, and Coach Rocco talked about it at halftime, and I, I'm surprised too. Uh, you know, Richmond, I mean, the game plan was they're going to run it and pound it and pound it, but they only averaged 3.0 per rush in the first half. I, I know that he wants to get that big offensive line leaning a little bit more on these uh, AT uh, defenders. Now for the 40 yard line. What a day it's been for Kevin Johnson. Out of this stack look now with Deontes Thompson behind him. He's going to take a shot. He's got the out to Garrett Hudson. Hudson, big, big play. Finally pushed out of bounds by Tard McCoy. Huge, huge play. Now they ran the wheel route to the big tight end. And he got down that sideline in pretty good shape. 6'4, 250. And boy, Johnson put it right on the money. 
forty nine yards worth. What a day Kevin Johnson's had huh. He really has and I'll tell you the coach Rocco's got to be thrilled with this performance and that was a good game plan right there though they ran him out of the backfield on a wheel route. The outside backer did not pick him up. Ten of fifty two hundred and two yards now. Now the jet sweep Brown wanted to get the corner not fooled that defense. That's Adrian McPherson who wears number 58 on the stop. McPherson made it happen as Brian Brown couldn't find any room. Boy, and the Aggie defense has really shut down number 12 today. And remember now, he's caught a pass in 36 straight games coming into this year. They have done an outstanding job against Brian Brown. Second and nine now. The line to make is down at the two yard line. Thompson with space and the end zone. Touchdown. Deontes Thompson. But we have got a hold that's going to call it back on Richmond. Yeah, that one's definitely Holding. coming back. Offense, number 50. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Yeah, that's on the left guard, John Yarbrough. Let's see if we can see it. Watch the left guard right here pulling. Well, yeah, he, he got a tug on the jersey there, no question about it. That was that wasn't a bad hold. I think he was trying to just save himself from because he got uh, stood up pretty good by Ragland. Right, this is going to bring up now a second down, and we'll call it 19. Again, that line to make is uh, down at the three yard line. So that hold took the touchdown run for Beatez Thompson off the board. Motion from Hudson. Play action. Johnson firing that zone off the hands of Brian Brown. Boy, that would have taken an absolutely perfect throw. The coverage was good. But to, to catch us and keep get a foot down boy, right off the fingertips. He may not have been able to get a foot down anyway. It's going to break up third down in 19. Now that's McCoy on the coverage. Oh man that was close. Yep. Third and 19 again they can pick up that first down inside the two. The whistles stop it before the snap. Delay of game offense number seven five yard penalty third down. No, 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 that uh, that really puts them in a, a lot tougher position even for a field goal and again it's kind of getting cold here and he definitely has a slight wind in his face if they do have to go for a field goal. Going to run the football Deontes Thompson on third and 24. Thompson got a bunch of it back. Finally dragged out at the 11 yard line. Marcus Albert on the stop. Field goal time again for Griffin Trow. Boy, and Deontes uh, Thompson, he got the ball in the dead center of the field for him as well. He has Try not missed from this distance no, all done. year. Try to bump the lead. He's 12 of 12. This one will come from about 27 of that line drive shot. He's now four for four inside 39 yards. Back to a 16 point lead, 26 10 when we come back. Hubbard join our first round uh, Division One FCS uh, playoffs here out of Robert Stadium in Richmond and Griffin Trow has been the guy for Richmond. Huh? He's banged four field goals straight and true 39 33 34 28. My partner Doug Graber just so he hasn't missed from inside 39 yards on the year and the lead is back to 16 again here early third quarter. 
Well, the North Carolina A&T has to make something happen now on this series, and they've either got to get the shake code loose again, or get the ball with one of those wide receivers and give them a chance to go. And Chris Garden, they're going to kick away from Garden this time. Oh, football is out as uh, absolutely walloped. Was a and T kick returner. Yeah, it was Deshaun McFadden who got absolutely unloaded on. Watch this hit. This is a monster collision right here. Oh, he did, oh, he just dropped the football, didn't he? Yes, he did. He took a hit, but he dropped the football before. And uh, uh, yeah, he was losing. It before, that's why it was pure day. He was losing the football before the hit, and uh, that just made it worse. But he took a shot. by the receiving team. First down. That's Malik AMG. Wilson, by the way, on the return. He did get rocked, but the football had come up. Billy Cole on that stop. Huge hit. Got Romero at quarterback again. Fifth year senior. Young man out of Washington, D.C. This is an unbalanced triple slot formation. Three receivers down to the bottom of your screen. Going to throw the bubble screen to Chris Garden. Garden got hit by Micah Keels to bring up second down. Ball came out, but after Keels was uh, on the deck. Yep. Doug been very impressed with this uh, very closing anticipating Richmond secondary today. Micah Keels, Tafon Mainsa, the two corners, they've been outstanding. They really have, and they've been under a lot of duress for those two great wide receivers that the Aggies have. Uh, it's second and four from the 28 yard line. Bamiro gonna gun Go. it out in open space as he was able to put that on his wide receiver Xavier Griffin. Griffin got stopped by Omar Howard. Another one of those big wide receivers. Griffin had some room to operate. First down. Illegal block in the back. Offense number 84. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. It would have been a first down yep. had it not been for that block in the back. And that was an RPO. That was definitely a run pass option or one of those where they read the safety and either keep it or throw it. Made it made the correct decision, did Bamaro. But unfortunately, he got the hold on Elijah Bell right there. Second and seven for Bamiro. What's to put it up? Gonna take a shot deep. That ball was broken up. Intended for Elijah Bell. And breaking that up uh, for Richmond out of the secondary was Charles Mack. Watch Mack, the strong safety, wears number 19. Yeah, he was up over the top. And uh, boy, watch Bell get up. That's just a great defensive play. Came in with his right hand and knocked it right out of his hands. Double coverage on Bell, and they're wise to double cover him. It's a third down and seven for Bamiro. He's going to check down, and Tariq Cohen dropped the football. I think he took a peek, Doug Graber. Yeah, it's a no question. The old adage, boy, you've got to look the football in. Let's take a look at his head here and see if he takes a peek down the field. Right. I'm not sure that he did, but boy, he's got to make that catch. That brings in Steve Sawicki to punt it away. Yeah, Sawicki is going to have to hit it from about his 15 yard line. and. He'll hang this high but short. Brissett telling everybody to uh, get out of there. And that's going to give the Richmond Spiders pretty good operating position as they will start at the 37 yard line. Rod Broadway 
and his squad. You know, they had the seven nothing lead, Doug Graber, and I mean since then, you know, they have uh, not been able to capitalize. They've been down in the red zone three different times. Yes, they have. But only have come away with three points in it, so they've been outscored 26 to three since they had the seven nothing lead. Yeah, and and again, that their their issues in the red zone and the punt return. That's what's uh, really got uh, Rod Broadway so far this week. And now let's see. If Richmond can get their running game going, AT's done a great job against the run. Two the, tight ends. Yeah, from the 37 yard line for Kevin Johnson. He wants to go upstairs. He's going to take a shot and air it out for Brian Brown, who was trying to separate from Tard McCoy. Double move there for Brown. Tried to get him the football now, Doug. Yeah, he did. And uh, they're, they're trying everything to get Brian Brown the ball. Uh, you know again first and 10 and they're showing a tremendous amount of confidence in Kevin Johnson they have thrown the football I think a lot more than they thought they would coming into this game and uh, he's not made any horrible mistakes uh, with the football he's done pretty darn well. All right, second and 10 now for the 37. Ground game Deontes Thompson. Shakes his way to the corner, got outside the numbers, real close to the first down. Thompson's run the football very hard at that position as Zenius Zarius Lockhart made the hit. And boy, if they needed Thompson to step up, and he has, Doug. Yeah, he has, and uh, that, that's one of the few cracks that have been in that uh, AT front all day long. Came up a spot, got him a, a yard shy of the uh, the line to make. So it's going to bring up a third down and one. They brought the fullback in the game. That's a Pavic now on the two backs I formation. But they're going to put it up on third and short. Going to throw the out. Brian Brown. Did he haul it in? Yeah. He secured the football at the 31 yard line. That's 24 yards and a first down. How about the throw from Kevin Johnson? How about the confidence on third and one to uh, let this uh, kid make in his first start, make a key play? That was designed to go to Brown all the way on the crossing route with the hard, hard play action fake. Well, Kevin Johnson, I tell you what, if you told me mid third quarter this young man is going to be 11 of 18 for 225 yards? No. Wow. No way I would have believed this either. Off that zone read play fake. Johnson got a good block. It's going to throw the football away. He got a real good block from John Yarborough, his left guard. And now uh, down on the football field and injured is uh, Keondrick Richardson, the Mike linebacker. You see him. Uh, no, let's check. Yeah, D Richardson holding uh, his in the area rib area. Boy, and they they can't afford to lose him. He has had an outstanding year and a big day today. That that was a smart play, by the way. And now we got a late flag. That was a smart play by Johnson to throw that away. Personal foul, clipping, 50 offense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, repeat first down. Well, I singled out Doug John Yarborough for making this block, but it turns into a clip. Yeah, that was that was close, and, I, and they've really emphasized that uh, this year with the officials. Anything that even approaches uh, uh, low like that and behind, uh, they're going to flag it. Now safety uh, of players of extreme importance this year every yeah. every official we've talked to uh, beginning back in the spring and summer yep. said that this was going to be a point of great emphasis this year and it has been it has. This is first at 25 now for Kevin Johnson run the football Whoa. did Thompson just get absolutely blown up Marquise Raglan hello. Wow. That's that penetration. That's that's their defensive style. Look at well, that's a mistake. They didn't block him. I mean, anybody's gonna penetrate if you don't block him. That's a missed assignment up front. And that's a 280-pound fifth-year senior out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Second tackle for loss today from Raglan. He has been exceptional at the heart of the North Carolina ATD. 
Now Richmond keeps going in arrears here. Second and 28. Thompson got the edge and got a couple before he got spilled out of bounds by Deion Jones. Gonna bring up third down and real long for the Richmond Spiders. You know what we have not talked about Deont Deontes Thompson. He, he has been a workhorse from the middle of the season on. When the, remember they lost Xavier Goodman and Gordon Collins, their top two tailbacks. He has stayed healthy. They're they're in trouble if he goes down. Oh yeah. There are going to be guys to ask to play the position that don't normally play it. Third and 25. Johnson will trigger the out. Broken up beautifully by Marcus Albert. The rover, he closed on that tremendous anticipation to redirect it away from Brian Brown. You no, know, you always teach defensive players how to sprint out to you, run to the sideline. He did it and got a hand in on the football. And now having to put the football away is uh, going to be DJ Helkowski. And that's wow. going to come to a stop at the one yard line. DJ Helkowski out of Warrington, Virginia, unloaded that punt inside the wall. North Carolina ATs football when we get back. Great to have you with us as our first round of our Division I FCS football championships. Of course, presented by the Good Gang and Northwestern Mutual. Richmond with a 60 point lead. So, right on the two possession mark, 26 10, with Doug Graber and all of our crew, producer Steve Johnson, director Sam Ramos of the gang. I'm Michael Regai. And now, Oluwafemi Bamiro, the fifth year senior quarterback, he's virtually taking the snap on the goal line here. This is a good job of coaching. They have Marquell Cartwright in at running back because uh, Tariq Cohen is not a north and south back. He's an east and west guy. They'll run out of that power eye. And this is Cartwright. Strong run from Marquell Cartwright to the eight yard line. Lamont Johnson made the stop, but Cartwright got seven on first down. That, that's a huge play right there to get off of your own uh, end line, goal line. And uh, you're right, north and south running by Markwell Cartwright. And there he is on the season. Hasn't had a lot of work, but when you got Tariq Cohen carrying the football 200 times, yeah. you know, your reps are going to be a little limited. Now back to the uh, the shotgun. Zone read, keeping the football. Oluwafemi Bamiro, and uh, Bamiro will get uh, knocked down at. About the 11, and that's going to bring up third down and short here. And you know, Mike, and we've compared Tariq Cohen to Barry Sanders, but you know, Barry Sanders with the Lions, they did not use him much in short yardage or the goal line right. because, again, he, he was not a north and south guy. All right, third down, long one. What does Rod Broadway uh, have in mind and his offensive coordinator, Chip Hester? For Oluwafemi Bamiro. He'll keep the football. Oh, they're going to see if that push will get him there. I don't think so, but we might as well wait till they unstack. Doug Bamiro started zone read to yeah, go that, to the mesh point, and there was no running back. That's there. a busted play. No question about it. That is a total bust. And they were very, very fortunate uh, to get enough for the first down. Bamiro, 6'4, 211. His size really helped him there. Well, that push did gain the 13 yard line and move those chains first down as we come inside the five minute mark here. A lot of work to do, though, for the Aggies of North Carolina AT, the MEAC champions. Bamiro will play pitch and catch with Chris Garden. Garden made the grab and uh, Justin Rubin. Rubin, who is getting back into action, Doug, he got uh, he got uh, ejected for the football game last week for targeting. Yeah, and that was the key play of the game. That was a 14 point swing because he caused the fumble on the hit that was picked up in return for touchdown, came back because of the targeting call. 
Uh, second and four now after a gain of six as we'll come inside four minutes left in the third. Bamiro all kinds of time. Got to check down. This is Tariq Cohen. Cohen just nowhere to go. He got ushered out of bounds. Great job stringing that out by Lamon Johnson in that Richmond defense. Johnson pushed Cohen out of bounds. Yeah, this is a great game plan by defensive coordinator Chris Kosh. You know, and you talk about a veteran coach. You know, he was on Nick Saban's staff at Michigan State. He's been at Illinois, Case, South Carolina. He, this is a big time coaching staff that uh, Danny Rocco has assembled here. So this is a crowd here inside Roberts Stadium coming up here on this third down at seven. That was Chris Kosh right there giving the signals from the sideline. Uh, you see the four wide receiver look with Cohen offset. Bamiro will check down to Cohen. Can he make a move? Well, the discipline of this defense. Micah Keels made the stop. Doug, and that, isn't that not what it is? Discipline. They, they break down and make secure hits. Hey, they're very well coached defensively. You you called it. They break down in the open field. They don't try to get the big hit. They try to make the tackle. And uh, that was a great job by Keels right there. He was in cover two. He had the flat, made a great read, came up, and made a great open field tackle. And Steven Sawicki has got to put the football away. Brissett coming together. Right, Brissett was able to hold on to the football. Wow, that could have been big, big trouble. Jeremy Taylor almost took that football away from Jacoby Brissett. Along with Tyler Wilkins. Yeah, and that's why I, I like a single safety on punt returns. I've never liked the double safety just for that reason right there. That ball was punted right in the middle and there was poor communication. Yeah, so Dijon Brissett and Tyler Wilkins with uh, oh, that, uh, close to a big time misadventure. Well, they're going to keep the football and this is Kevin Johnson on that straight quarterback run. Look at him slip tackles. He's got 11 yards at a first down maybe more late flag flies. Well that was Brian Brown. Let's check that. Yeah Brown took the direct snap there. Trying to get him the football Doug in a few different ways. However today. they could get it to him. Yeah. Uh, they've also lost all their wildcat back so they moved Brown this week to that wildcat position. There's his second rush of the afternoon. Yeah, he's only he's only had one caught pass today one reception for 23 yards. Yeah that was that uh, that uh, third down play action across the field that was designed to get him the ball. Coach Rocco obviously this is against Rich because he's not liking this. <laughs> Well, that flag flew from where you normally see an all late hit. Now, Brian Brown got on that white boundary, and we'll wait, and we're going to find out with you as we get the call from Carl Vaccaro, our game referee. Personal foul, offense. Number 87, blocking a player while out of bounds. 15 yard penalty, repeat first down. Don't see that a lot, but they got Deshaun Tibbs, so it went on the offensive player, the wide receiver. Well, you heard Carl Vaccaro, is it? evidently Tibbs is trying to put a block on a defender on the boundary out of bounds. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that call before. Back to the ground game. Deontes Thompson has broke free. Thompson finally got taken to the ground at the 44 yard line. That's 13 yards and a first down for Thompson. Uh, here's the penalty of the previous play right there. Well, that was pretty innocent, I think, really, don't you? Now, was there a lot of contact? No. No. Was he blocking him three yards out of bounds? Yes. Yes. Letter of the law. Got it. Intent of the rule. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, no. I guess. Thompson got nine. Second down and one. So we're inside. Two minutes left of the third. Toss sweep. Thompson got a first down. 
Got a pretty good block uh, from center Nicholas Vergos. Vergos wears number 55, and the usher tops it to the corner. First down. Now this offensive line: uh, right tackle Claybert, 6'8", 315; Evans, right guard, 315. Uh, the, the left tackle, 6'6", 305, is Alex Light Yarborough, 6'2", 6'5", 290. That's a good big offensive line and they're going to start leaning on him here now as we get into the fourth quarter. Yeah there they are and they've ushered Deontes Thompson to 84 yards today. Throwing the out is Johnson. Outstanding sliding catch by Brian Brown. His second reception of the afternoon. That's Brown and that's going to be good for 16 in the first down down to the 32 yard line. Well, wow, this was a heck of a throw by Kevin Johnson. He had to come back for it, did Brown. But, uh, you know, Kevin Johnson, the son of a coach, his dad's a high school coach. His dad played at South Carolina. Uh -huh. And so many, so often, uh, the quarterbacks whose father were high school coaches, boy, they just learned the game a lot faster. Look at the numbers for Kevin Johnson. What a day, his first career start. Now he's going to load it up and look for six. Brown got it. Touchdown, Richmond Spiders. Wow. You know, and Kevin Johnson has gotten better and better and better as the game has progressed. That was a terrific throw. Movement pass, play action, put it right on the money to Brown. Split the two safeties, as you see right there. Well designed play by John Garrett the offensive coordinator and well executed by Kevin Johnson boy that's the guy right there Brown you want to get the football to him. His 10th receiving touchdown of the year Kevin Johnson 13 of 21 for 277 yards and with the lead at now 22. Coach Danny Rocco is going to try to put it on three full possessions and bump the lead to 24 points here. Yep, and you know, honestly, with all the injuries they've had, if I'm Coach Johnson, now I'm just, uh, that's an excellent play by the defensive back. Zarius Lockhart, Doug, broke that two point conversion up that was intended for Brian Brown. However, the big touchdown hit has Danny Rocco feeling real good. 23rd career receiving TD ties the program's all time mark held by Walker Gillette way back in the late 60s. You know, Ryan Brown, quite a day coming, and career. Absolutely. Coming into the day, he was 17th all time in FCS history. With uh, He has to be now close to over 4,000 yards for a career. Pretty good number for a wide receiver. So the lead is now sitting at 22 points. Well, that's uh, a healthy three possession lead. Yeah. For that man, Danny Rocco, their third straight FCS playoff appearance. Doug, they've gone seven times in the last 12 years. This is Rocco's fifth season. But you know, uh, as you look at Rod Broadway, though, Danny Rocco is just running one of 10 FCS programs to go three consecutive seasons yep. to the FCS playoffs. That's how ultra competitive and you know, very difficult year by year this FCS is to get to this playoff format. And he felt that this year's team could have gotten to the championship game except for all the injuries they've had. All right, Ricky Seegers to kick this away. Chris Garden on the return in open space. But well, Chris Garden, some kind of return man. For the Yankees of North Carolina A and T out to the 45 yard line. As Trent Williams made the special team hit. That's 36 yards of this kickoff return for Chris Garden. Yeah and they had two double teams at the point of attack and they really executed the blocking very very well in Garden 5 7 158 but uh, he's got good instincts as a return guy. So a pass receiver as he'll work out of the slot. All right, 21 seconds now left of the third quarter. For Olawafemi Bamiro, back shoulder throw, and that's hauled in by Denzel Keys. 
You know, Doug, that might be the best ball that uh, Bamiro's thrown today. That back shoulder out that Keys hauled in. Yeah, that was a great throw, and uh, boy, he's really got the right guy to get it to right here. Watch him right there. Great body control. Uh, that that guy, I'll tell you, he he adjusts to the football as good as any receiver I've seen. Really impressed with him. Uh, clock ticking, going to be the final snap of this third quarter. Cohen going to run that reverse. Looking to throw the football is Elijah Bell. And I, he's outside the tackle box. There with no white shirt in the area and just fired it with his left hand out of bounds. <laughs> Kieran Gregory had him wrapped up as the third quarter comes to an end. Uh, now look at the flag being thrown. Yeah. Just dropped by Carl Vicaro. Intentional grounding. Offense number 84. Five yard penalty includes a loss of down. Second down. Yeah, there's no That's question the about the third that. Quarter. 45 minutes in the books. Well, North Carolina A&T on the road here and going to need a big fourth quarter spurt. The Richmond lead is 32-10 when we get you back in our first round FCS playoffs. 15 minutes of football to go as we get you back to Robbins Stadium here on the campus of the University of Richmond, Richmond, Virginia. Michael Regai, Doug Graver, great to have you along today. This could be a second down at 20 now for quarterback Olawafemi Bamiro. Bamiro being chased. He'll step up, unload deep. Almost got picked off by Micah Keels. Now we've got a flag in the middle of the football field. This Richmond defense has just been outstanding today. Uh, the coverage in particular down the field has been spectacular. And then see uh, Sorry we didn't get the call but North Carolina and T they're only averaging 2.7 per rush. An eligible man downfield offense number 65. That foul is declined third down. Yeah, so often happens with the quarterback scramble. You get one of the linemen that uh, that was uh, Daquan Blake, the right guard. Thinking he's going to run, he pulls it up and throws it. Uh, but again, this defense is, to me has been the story for Richmond today. The, the defense, and of course, obviously Kevin Johnson has had uh, a great, great day as a quarterback. There you see, uh, Coach Chris Kosh, the defensive coordinator. Play clock at three. Play clock at one. This is Tariq Cohen. They want to get him in open space. Cohen gets run out of bounds at the 41 yard line. So Cohen was able to pick up six. Boy, did they have him surrounded? They, well, they, they have had him surrounded they were, all day, Doug. Yeah, they have. And there were four Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> Richmond players that had him absolutely hemmed in with no chance. Steven Sawicki is on the football field, so Rod Broadway looking at fourth and 15. And down by 22 points just uh, in starting the fourth quarter. Well, that nose down push, Sawicki did not hit that anywhere near the way he wanted to. This this net punt is going to be for uh, just 22 yards. 22 yards. Richmond. Are they going to start trying to take some air out of the football with their 22 point lead? We'll be right back. Yeah, looking to uh, ward off a little bit of the chill. That is uh, creeped into the city of Richmond today. A beautiful day, though, for college football late November. Started at game time, temperature about 54 degrees. It has dropped some, though, as my personal <laughs> meteorologist partner Doug Graber tells me. And this is Deontes Thompson. That's a, a real tough three yard gain on first down before Tyree Andrews took him down. Well, we heard Coach uh, Rocco at the halftime interview, and he, he he said he was very surprised they have not been able to run the football better 
Uh, but boy give this uh, front uh, a lot of credit for the Aggies they have played tough and hard nosed up front in the running game all day. If Kevin Johnson hadn't had the days had the, they would have been in some trouble. Our intrepid crew here in the booth tells me it's 47 degrees now after we started at 54 at game time. This is Thompson. Good cut. Well he seeks just that little seam Doug. He's got uh, Richmond to within third down and a short two here to keep this drive alive. Yeah he's been extremely productive uh, all year long. Uh, remember they lost their top two tailbacks. He stepped in and he's done a heck of a job averaging six point two for rush he had seven hundred sixty one yards rushing uh, coming into the day. He's been the workhorse today 21 carries 93 yards and a touchdown so averaging a strong four and a half per tote. Yep and redshirt freshman. Play action now on third and one Johnson will deliver that throw and it is caught. Marcus Albert able to uh, make the stop but seeping out there was James Pavick. Pavick 245 pound 50 year H back got himself free. Good job by uh, Johnson getting his shoulders turned going to his left and he has gotten better and better and better as the day has worn on. Yeah Doug he, he's closing in on 300 yards passing now folks. This is a young quarterback who's thrown seven passes in his career. Thompson, the first down call, will tough out about four to bring up second at six. Doug, two for seven. This is Kevin Johnson now. Yep. Last year. This is last year in mop up, dude. Yep. yep. Two for seven for 22 yards. That's the extent of the young man's quarterbacking career. Till today. How about the unselfishness to give up his red shirt year right. to help this football team as they get into the playoffs. I mean that, that that says it all to me. Now we're going to go Brian Brown huh? direct snap here. Yep. Brown will keep the football and has room. Brian Brown that long strider to the 40 yard line. So uh, Brown of North Carolina a &T, 13 yards Kenneth Melton on the hit. His own read and he read it correctly pulled the football and he's got a burst now he's he's not a little guy either he's 6 2 2 0 5. Be interesting to see uh, who grabs him in this uh, upcoming NFL draft. You hear his name called we know that. No, Garrett Hudson and Steve Jacob, the two big tight ends, jumbo look. Johnson going to take a shot. Wheel route. Thompson made the grab. Circled out of the backfield to the 17-yard line. That's 23 more yards. Zarius Lockhart on the hit. Johnson's over 300 yards passing on the day. Yeah, and they get in that formation and they know that the Aggies are going to be in a three deep zone and all he does is read the corner. He had the, uh, the seam route and the wheel route both made a great throw. We're, we're seeing this young guy mature and get a lot better in, right in front of us today. Yeah Kay. it's like you can reach out and grab it right. Yep, it's tangible. Absolutely. It's just there for you. What a performance. Zone read. Johnson will keep the football. Look at the wiggle and shake. Kevin Johnson with a push from his offensive line got close to the first down sticks at the six yard line. What a performance from this sophomore from Atlanta. OK now Michael I'm going to bring this up. Oh wow look at that move. I'm going to bring this up though. You've got uh, you know a 22 point lead. You're in the fourth quarter. You don't have another quarterback. I mean, you're, you know, at some point you've got to consider that. Uh, just letting him hand the football off, and uh, and not take any more opportunities to take any hits. That was his seventh carry today, Coach. Yep. Seventh carry. Now he's taking some shots. Got in that scrum there with his old line pushing him. <laughs> On second and one, Thompson got stood up. Depends on the spot. It's going to come up short. Zarius Lockhart. Zarius Lockhart. Uh, we've had some safety at cornerback play today. 
Well, Lockhart at 175 pounds, he just steps into the A and B gaps and just says, I basically, I'll take on running backs myself. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but man, does he fill those seams and cracks. He has had a great football game today. Started 35 straight games coming into the day. Yep. Player. Player he, right there. He is a player. That's exactly right. Still has another year if he wants it, too, for Rod Broadway, Jr. A Johnson on that waggle right. Kevin Johnson inside the five. No signal yet. Touchdown. Johnson crossed that final strike and maybe has put this one away for Richmond. Well, look at that smile as he comes off. And that's the same smile I saw in the football office yesterday. Good decision right here. Excellent decision. Covered down the field, got the first down. Wow, he held the hit. That's a touchdown. I didn't think it was. Look at him hold the football out over the goal line. Wow, what awareness. How about his presence of mind there, huh? That's uh, that's uh, Coach John Garrett uh, talking to him right there, offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. Yeah, he was about he, he took that shot while airborne and was going to land on his wallet. Yep. <laughs> but stretch that football out over the goal line. Griffin Trow now to add the PAT with 844 left. This might have been the one that sends Richmond to the second round next week against North Dakota. 39-10. Eyes of our ESPN camera crew as dusk starts to settle in here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. All the that Richmond spider extending. <laughs> they feel good because they've got a 39 to 10 lead right now after Kevin Johnson directed another touchdown drive. Chris Garden from the goal line on this kickoff return. To the 23 yard line, Billy Cowell on the special team stop. Doug down by 29 now, my friend, and uh, this is this is going to take a, a very heroic North Carolina a and Aggies effort if they're going to get back in this one. Yeah, it will, and, and I'll tell you, the Richmond team, their special teams, by the way, coached by Dave Leg, uh, he's done a great job with this unit, but their special teams, their offense and their defense have all played very, very well today. And uh, now as the, as, you know, the sun uh, starts to set here in Richmond, Coach Broadway has to be praying for some big time explosive plays on offense. Bamiro will uh, check down and find the the lightning quick Tariq Cohen. So Cohen uh, dances his way to the 26 yard line. Uh, Cohen got a uh, got a couple we'll call it second down and uh, seven but Cohen has really been bottled up today Doug this all American 30 carries 70 yards but remember 45 of them was yep. his uh, that his one explosive water, play. explosive play today. Yeah uh, the, the, the defense has been I think spectacular the two gap has been worked to perfection. And they just haven't given him any room. Bamiro's going to load it up dead Zell keys he got picked off. Charles Mack playing center field for Richmond. Mack on the INT in return. Took a shot, did over with Femi Bamero. Dougie had keys running free, but Mack read the quarterback's eyes. He really did. He, he did not take the pump fake. He's right there playing center field, and that's what the free safety is supposed to do. And he went up and high pointed the football. Big time play right there, and really that that pretty much, in my opinion, seals it. Uh, they can't come back from that. And now, if you're Richmond. You want to just run the football, let that clock run, see if you can grind out a couple of first downs here. Not a celebration over on that sideline for Charles Mack. 
So without their starting quarterback today, Kyle Laletta, and their backup quarterback, uh, Reed Chenault, hurt. And now Chenault, though, is going to uh, get some action here, the freshman. Right here for the state of Virginia. So Kevin Johnson work done today evidently. Hot is 15 for 23 for 315 yards and a <laughs> touchdown throw sound for the young man red shirted he thought yep. until he told head coach Danny Rocco I'm going to come back help you out this year and burn a red shirt. And a uh, nice good looking young man and a very very smart uh, John Garrett went on and on about how uh, he was prepared for this. Uh, this was no I mean he, he has worked all year. Now it's second and nine going to go back to the ground game and try to grind out tough yards but more importantly keep the clock moving. As uh, once again uh, on that carry, Jay Palmer gets his first carry of the day. There you see Palmer, number 27. Now uh, we've seen uh, Deontes Thompson have the bulk of the carrying today. Of course, Brian Brown got a couple of jet sweeps, and now first carry for Jay Palmer. Yeah, and and I absolutely applaud the moves. Uh, you know, getting Kevin Johnson out of there, Deontes. I mean, they don't. Really have outstanding backups for either one of those positions. So get him out of the game. Keep him healthy. Get ready for North Dakota. Palmer on that zone read carry. And it's going to bring up fourth down. So the three carries, and that football came out. The whistles continue to blow. So three carries uh, from Richmond only nets a yard going to bring up fourth down and nine as we come inside six minutes. You know and in fairness to Jay Palmer he, he moved to running back from defensive back sure. because of all their injuries there. Now fourth and nine the football at the 34 yard line and. Danny Rocco just uh, tells Reed Chanel just go run a play with the lead at 29 points Palmer again and North Carolina a t four carries they faced only gave up a couple of yards and that'll turn it over on downs back to the Aggies to uh, have another go offensively here. Be interesting to see if we see some of the twos in now defensively for coach Rocco. All right, uh, we're going to get a timeout here. 527 left. Danny Rocco and his squad comfortably ahead. Take a look at uh, North Dakota. That uh, is looking like it lays in wait for these Richmond Spiders and football team that averages 31 points a game. But look at the turnover mark down there, about plus 17. As uh, they know how to protect the football and get the football out, as Olawafemi Bamiro uh, not able to hook up with Leroy Hill. They'll bring up second down at 10. So, Doug, it's looking like, again, sort of short of something absolutely miraculous, that uh, this 2016 football season is going to come to an end for Rod Broadway. This their first FCS playoff berth in 13 years. Of course, they're the fourth MEAC squad automatically to the conference championship. I'll tell you about last year in a second. Bamiro is going to throw the football out of bounds, going to bring up third down. Doug, last year, the MEAC champ, they decided to play in what's called the Celebration Bowl. Yep. Right? Yes. In Atlanta. So the MEAC gave up their automatic qualifier. To the FCS playoffs, but got it back. Decided they'd rather be in, in the playoff format this year. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is a, a good. And I'll tell you, this North Carolina a t team—they're a young team. Right. And remember, they lost their top two quarterbacks. Yeah. And with those receivers and that running back, they will be a load next year. Yeah, Lamar Reynard. Yep. Started the year, he got hurt. Khalil Carter lost him. Bamiro firing deep and he got picked off. That's Lamont Judson. Judson on the interception. And deep 
into North Carolina A&T territory. So back to back picks Charles Mack possession to go and now Lamont Johnson. Yeah they just did a cover two and uh, you know he's just trying to make something happen here but cover two and that's a gift and uh, the safety's right there and that really cements it and now again and I, I really applaud coach Rocco getting all of his twos in the game on both sides of the football. Uh, let's keep these uh, starters healthy. Let's get ready to get on the plane to go to North uh, Dakota next Friday. And for Coach Broadway, they will be back in the playoffs. I promise you, there's a lot of young talent on this team. All right, for the 35 yard line, again, it's Reed Chenault. And the running back is uh, Jay Palmer. So Palmer's going to probably, he's going to probably get every snap here yeah, going down I, the stretch. Right? I would think so. And uh, th yeah, they've got their entire uh, second unit in the game. The off the second offensive line is in the game. Uh, everybody is out. But boy, how about Kevin Johnson today? Phenomenal, Doug. We we watched that young man really grow up as a quarterback today. And I'll tell you, by the second half, he was playing at a high level. And quite honestly, when we spoke to head coach Danny Rocco on Wednesday, he did say. I have confidence in Johnson as Palmer tries to bounce it to the outside and just nowhere to go. Leon Smalls led the hit for A&T. He said I have confidence in him but you know Doug he also as you would expect kid hasn't played quarterback at forget about in a <laughs> game hadn't even been practicing the position right. since 2015 as you look at Kevin Johnson today. So you know Danny Rocco didn't you guys say well I have confidence in him but it could be a mixed bag. Well, there's a reason they redshirted him. They think he's going to be a good player. Sure. And they're right. This is third down and nine now. They'll run out of that eye and uh, play action now for Reed Chanel. Chanel will keep the football and slide down at the 31 yard line. And that is going to bring up now fourth down and long. The heads up play by Chanel. Uh, he knows why he's in there. And uh, you know to keep the clock running and not get out of bounds. Clock is running. And that's the friend of the spiders right now. You know, and it's a, a shame all the students at Richmond, of course, are gone on Thanksgiving break. So that obviously hurt their attendance today. But uh, still, pretty darn uh, lively crowd. That's fourth down at seven. Uh, Chenault will again hand the football off to Jay Palmer. Got the edge. Palmer's got a first down. And he stays in bounds to keep the clock running. Jeremy Taylor on the hit. So Jay Palmer said, I don't want to give the football over on downs again. Yeah, that's the outside zone. And he bounced it outside. And uh, nice job right there of getting the first down. Clock 234 and running. Yet another Jay Palmer carry. It's running that lead power as they ran with uh, the fullback in front of uh, Palmer. H back Leon Smalls again made the hit for North Carolina A&T. So good year for Rod Broadway, but it's going to come to an end here today, as we mentioned. North Carolina A&T. Tough one uh, last week. They got beat to end the regular season. And uh, now we'll as Doug Betts look forward to with a lot of youngsters on this roster into an off season of uh, making themselves better Palmer nowhere to go got tracked down from the backside as we're inside of 90 seconds left now. Yeah and let's not forget uh, Coach Broadway this this program was in horrible shape when he took over and he's. First time uh, for North Carolina and to the playoffs in 13 years and I promise you this team will be back in the playoffs. A lot of young talent. Of course obviously 
you know they're, they're going to lose their their great uh, running back Tariq Cohen and the and the senior receiver boy they've got some lot of good players especially on defense that are young and yet one more carry for Jay Palmer he took a, a pretty good shot as coming off the edge was Jeremy Taylor to make that hit and that's going to bring up a fourth down now and uh, this should be the final snap but I shouldn't say that because it's a fourth down yeah fourth so down could uh, get a stop at the clock and turn it over on downs here well the, the play clock has got still 15 seconds to go so they're, they're only going to have about five seconds left when they get the football. With a play clock at three, Jay Palmer, and that's going to turn it over on downs, and the clock will stop with eight seconds to go. We'll get our final timeout in and come back to finish it out. All Richmond Spiders. Just had the last play of the football game run, and that's going to do it. As the Richmond Spiders will move on to the second round of the FCS playoffs, most impressive 39 to 10 win. Want to thank all the great uh, men and women, Randy Atkinson, our talent staff, Stephen Hatfield also helped us with statistics, Greg Bicaveros, our stage manager, Robert Drury, our spotter, Pat Pierce, our audio technician. All you guys, fabulous job. Of course, our producer, Steve Johnson, director, Sam Ramos, and all the game. Doug Graber, real quick, Kevin Johnson, what a tremendous effort, huh? Unbelievable. He, he was really the difference in the game, and, uh, and now, obviously, head to North Dakota. A game December 3rd in North Dakota outdoors. That'll be interesting. That'll be fun, partner. Great job to watch this entire game on replay as well as other games that are family of ESPN networks. Log on to watch ESPN.com or download the watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. For Doug Graver and the crew, I'm Michael Regai. So long from Richmond. The Richmond Spiders beat North Carolina at 39-10. Have a good weekend.